Today in the orchard, we will be making biochar out of wood that I have laying around the orchard. So one thing about the soil out here is that it is a sandy loam soil. It also tends to rain a lot in this environment, in this particular microclimate. Therefore, a lot of the nutrients leach out really quick. To make this garden thrive this year and to make the apple orchard, to build that orchard soil up in garden soil and to have it in the compost as well, the answer is biochar. Biochar's porous structure acts like a sponge holding water and preventing runoff. This helps mitigate drought stress and reduces the need for frequent irrigation. For this batch of biochar, I'm using wood. Some scraps I have laying around the orchard here. We've got alder, fir, birch. I'm using a bunch of different kinds, but the best is probably a good hardwood. Just about any agricultural residue or organic biomass can work. To make biochar, we're going to be utilizing a process called pyrolysis. It is a reaction and during pyrolysis, the organic material undergoes a complex thermochemical reaction. Volatile gases like methane, hydrogen, carbon monoxide are all released and can be captured for energy use. The remaining solid residue is biochar. Here I am starting a fire to get this process going. I'm loading on some wood. I used a small piece of fire starter to get this lit. And I'm just going to keep on adding uh, scrap wood. Carbonization occurs at high temperatures, causing a breakdown of complex organic molecules into simpler carbon structures. The carbonization process stabilizes the carbon, making it resistant to decomposition. The process that I'm going to use is actually quite crude and involves just digging out a fire pit and making a fire in it. This is more in line with the more traditional way of making biochar. In the traditional method, biochar was made in a pit in a large fire, and the fire was smothered, usually with soil, to produce the biochar. This method is not the most efficient by any means. Some modern methods include making a gasifier set up out of several barrels and a chimney. It reduces excess gases that are emitted from the burning process. As I build this fire, you'll notice I'll throw in some extra scraps, even some bark. The goal here is to try to get an even burn. And in this case, the wood does not have the same moisture content throughout. There is some variation. It is best to use dry wood, but for this case, I'm using what I have. Some of it is a little bit more damp. I'm going to burn that all off. Also, it is advisable that you use pieces that are similar in size then you get a more even burn and a better coal production. As the biomass is heated, pore structure formation occurs. The heating and release of volatile gases create a porous structure in the biochar. These pores enhance the biochar surface area, providing habitats for microbes and improving nutrient retention. To aerate and to distribute the heat, evenly throughout the coal base. I use a bamboo poker to sift through the coals to make sure they are all burning even. Ideally, the gases will all burn off and the coals will emit a light blue flame. Burning the coals for too long or over firing can create ash and not biochar. The goal here is to get the coals to the right temperature where they are a solid coal base but not turning to ash. This will make prime biochar. When the optimal coal base is achieved, I then go to quench the pile. In more traditional methods, you would use soil to cover it, but in this case, I'm gonna quench the pile with water, causing the pores to even further open up and crack. It also will flush out some of the 
volatile tars and compounds that have remained. Be aware when quenching this coal base and the fire, large quantities of steam will be produced. You definitely want to extinguish the fire completely before moving on. I've noticed that in this fire, there are a few pieces off to the side that didn't burn all the way through and probably contained some brown material in the center. The next day I go and look at the pit and notice some really nice biochar. I'm going to shovel it out. When adding biochar to your soil, it can alter soil pH, typically towards neutral, creating a more favorable environment for many different kinds of plants. It interacts with soil minerals and nutrients, influencing their availability for plants. Nutrients like nitrogen and phosphorus bind to biochar, reducing leaching and making them more available to plants over time. Moreover, the porous nature of biochar provides a habitat for beneficial microbes. Microorganisms thrive in these spaces, contributing to the improved soil structure, organic matter decomposition, and nutrient cycling. Biochar also enhances soil aggregation, creating stable aggregates that resist soil erosion. This leads to improved aeration and root penetration, promoting healthier plant growth. Additionally, biochar can have suppressive effects on certain soil-borne pathogens, contributing to overall plant health. Now that the biochar is made, it is ready for inoculation after it is crushed into smaller pieces. Inoculating biochar involves introducing beneficial microorganisms to enhance its performance in the soil. When inoculating biochar, choose microorganisms such as mycorrhizal fungi, and nitrogen-fixing bacteria and other beneficial soil microbes. The selection depends on your specific goals. The inoculum is a mixture of water and other carriers, such as high concentrations of beneficial microorganisms. It can be obtained through sources like compost, soil-rich and organic matter, or commercial microbial products. To activate the biochar, you soak it in the inoculum for a set period of time, allowing the microorganisms to adhere and colonize to its porous structure. Ensure even distribution of the inoculum throughout the biochar. Allow the inoculated biochar to incubate to facilitate the establishment and multiplication of microorganisms on its surface. Once the biochar is inoculated and activated, you can apply the biochar to the soil using methods like tilling, mixing, or surface application.